Okay. I think we're back on. Uh, there we go. I think, I think it's coming. Frank, I'm getting a 10 minute countdown. Are you? Okay. When I so, go to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, um, I, uh, let me just hold on a sec here. I don't know why it's not coming up on my end. Just a sec. Okay. It's spinning. Okay. So it's, it's on that. Um, let me see if I can. I've switched it to. Um, it should be changing shortly. Okay. It's just a couple of minutes uh, delayed here. So. Um, uh, come on. Okay, um, it should be coming on. It just I just got the notification on there. Ah, uh, come on. Oh, I, I, I see it now. It it the the title's just test. Is that the one? That's the one. Yeah, it just did it come through. Oh yeah, yeah I see it, it on YouTube now. Okay, so it's working. Yeah, because it. They, it wouldn't let me start without putting a title in there and I'm going, oh gosh, I don't have to start redoing the titles now, but uh, um, but it's still on, it's showing 10 minutes there still or? For, for me it is. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, Joseph, sure. I had to go back to the main YouTube page and look for the new stream. Ah. Okay. Okay. So that's what. Okay. Let me ask, let me just kick these things out. YouTube. Got it. Okay. So yeah, with with work, work the good. with the test stream, it, it's up for me. Okay. Let me just. Yeah. I got so many pages here to go on. Um. That's always the case, you know, you, you go and, and uh, okay, there it is. It's just, okay, I got it here. Okay, let me turn the volume off. Okay, good. Yeah. Technicalities, okay, I'll have to edit that at the, the end there. But anyway, as we were saying now, um, Darren, you were, you were just kind of say how you got involved in it and how long you've been at this uh, uh, hobby. Sure. Uh, so, uh, do you want me to go back to the yep. beginning, or yeah, okay. yeah, just yeah, just continue on if you can. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So the, the first time that I was actually field recording, and like I didn't even know that was the term for it, was in 2012. Uh, I was camping on Beaver Island with a group of friends, and I'd taken my Jeep over on the ferry for the week. And one day, I just went out driving by myself and uh, ended up on a beach. Uh, this long stretch of a uh, sandy beach with no one around for as far as I could see on in either direction. And I just got really caught up in the sound of the waves and got really focused on it. And it was like the first time I was conscious in a long time of, of being present in the moment. And uh, so I took my phone out, uh, my iPhone and just recorded it. Uh, like I said, I didn't know field recording was a thing. I just really liked the sound. <clears throat> And uh, I did that for years. Uh, I used my phone to record sounds uh, wherever I was at um, and not really being mindful of the quality of what is sound, you know, what the, the recording would be, but just so I could remember those sounds and listen to them later. Uh, and then a few years, few years later, I got the Zoom H5 uh, when it came out, uh, which is a, you know, a little handheld recorder uh, 24 bit, I think it does 24 bit, um, and used that for a while. And it just had a little stereo XY microphone and, you know, it, it wasn't great sound, but mm -hmm. it was better than my phone. And I used that for a while. And then in 2022, February of 2022, um, I got really serious about field recording. And that's when I really started, you know, recording long form, uh, sounds. Uh, spending a lot of time out in the the environments that I was recording. And then I, I started a podcast in June of 2022, where I started putting these sounds out, you know, for for anyone to really listen to. 
So I still consider myself a, a serious hobbyist at this point, but yeah. uh, this is primarily what I do almost full time now as a as a field recordist and a, a, a photographer. So you're out every day uh, recording, uh, getting sounds? Uh, a couple, at least a few times a week. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, my, my weeks generally, ev uh, you know, the, the work is focused on on making sure I am able to publish a, a podcast every every week. Mm -hmm. So I am out there quite a bit uh, trying to get those sounds. Yeah. And I, I like I being, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, and I, I like the podcast to be, you know, kind of in the moment, you know, so I don't have a huge backlog of stuff I can go back to, you know, in, in the winter, which in hindsight, maybe I should have thought that through a little bit better because uh, the winter hasn't been great recording this mm -hmm. year, just because it's such a strange winter in northern Michigan. So uh, I am really having to go out multiple days in a row to uh, to get you know, something I consider to be, you know, might be interesting enough for somebody to want to listen to. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I agree. You know, like on some of that, um, as, as I mentioned to you before, I did uh, a little recording uh, along our, our little seawall uh, by the river here that we have in here. And, and it, it was kind of one of the first times where I, I sat there for, uh, I believe it was 10 minutes and actually listening to the sounds, you know, uh, being very specific and listening to it because I had uh, the Roland, uh, well, the, the Roland uh, CS 10 EMs uh, in my ear. So whatever it was recording, I could hear it coming through and uh it, it was quite amazing to 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 hear a boat you know uh coming in off the left and and something over on the right and i could uh hear my wife and and her friend were talking behind me and they were about a 40 feet away and yet this little thing was picking it up so it was kind of a a cool thing that you know i've never really paid attention to it so but you know there it is so it's it kind of hooks you you know, uh, with these sounds. Um, now, Joseph, do you also uh, record sounds, or or are you just making the the product to record? Oh no, I, I, I record as well. Yeah. And I uh, could relate to both of your stories um, in that, you know, when you have the headphones on and you have the microphones live, and you are just in a space wherever it is listening it's like it it amplifies the and it intensifies as well kind of the the feeling or the experience that you get from the sounds like it's almost you know kind of like an analogy in my mind is when you have the lens of a camera up to your eye it kind of you know you you focus on things that you maybe wouldn't normally focus on um you also have it seems like you have access to sounds or to images or to subjects that you kind of maybe would go by unnoticed otherwise. Um, so yeah, for for me, um, if I, I I do a lot of recording here around New York, which is interesting because there's always a ton of sounds happening at any given time. Um, it's a lot of noise as well, so it's interesting to kind of listen to the layers of depth in that noise of, of the city. Um, so yeah, I, 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 uh, I record as often as I can, probably not as frequently as you do, Darren. Um, but it, it does, it does bring me, um, you know, great joy to have the mics yeah, out yeah, and listening. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that is pretty cool. Now, now, uh, with you, Darren, like the area that you live in now, is there, are they places that you go fairly close or do you, do you travel some distances to do your recordings? Oh, so it, that's a great question. I am very lucky uh, where I live here in northern Michigan uh, that uh, we are surrounded by national forest and state forest. So there's, you know, uh, you know over 100,000 probably more acres that are available to us uh, as uh, residents in this area. Uh, the Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore is about 40 minutes from my house. Um, I can walk right across the street from where I live now and, and be on state forest land. Uh, so we it's an abundance of, of areas to record. Uh, but like Joseph was talking about, there is a lot of noise pollution, even in these rural areas where I go. 
Um, even if you do find yourself in the middle of nowhere with no uh, street noise or sounds of cars, uh, chances are an airplane is going to fly over uh, just as you hit record. It's just uh, yeah. it's kind of the nature of uh, the world we live in these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is uh, quite something to um, to hear the noise pollution. Uh, I was watching, it was another YouTube uh, channel that uh, the person was going back, I think it was for 10 years or something, he was going back to the same spot and recording at the same spot, the same time frame and everything, and he was saying how how the, the noise has, has increased. And also, in, in some of the areas the uh, where there were bird population, the bird population has decreased. There's less, less of the birds, you know, so uh, it's kind of a... a a cool thing to record the sounds and then and to keep these because it just shows us how how things are changing over time yeah i think that's a that's a great point and you know i've experienced that as well you know since since 2012 even going back to some of the same places um and i you know i think the pandemic uh you know as 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 brutal as that was to live through it really it really opened up recreational areas and people started staying close to home mm -hmm. and, and going to these areas and then realizing that, wow, we have these jewels in our backyard. Why are we traveling elsewhere? So, you know, tourism has increased. Uh, I think just local residents utilizing these resources has increased. And, you know, that has brought you know, a lot of traffic to these sites, which is great uh, and, and very welcoming, but it, it does kind of beg the question, is there any sort of policy or guidelines that could be put in place around trying to keep some areas quiet mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, with, without, you know, without being overzealous about it or, or draconian, but you know, can we, are there things we could do? Uh, so I think that's a, a question I kind of ponder when I'm mm -hmm. out in these areas and uh, I hear yeah. the planes flying overhead, yeah. things like that. Well, you might be able to put something in your podcast about that, but you know, and 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 uh, that was a good comment because uh, I do the photography. My wife and I were away uh, photographing um, and and doing um, um, astro photos, and there's a couple of places in in Utah and Arizona that they do not allow lights to be shining up. Everything has to be pointed to the ground. They wanted to keep as dark as possible. Uh, and uh, that might be something for sound too, is, is, is to, mm -hmm. to, to push towards keeping that noise pollution down. Because I know even outside my window here, it's, it's a constant hum of motors and trucks. And, and it's just, some, sometimes, you know, I, I complain to my wife, like, gosh, you know, I just wish things would just shut up, you know, like it's just, you know, so, and I guess, Joseph, you have that because you're you're in you're in New York, so you've got to have even more noise pollution. Are you? I, I'm not sure exactly where you're living, but you know, in New York, it. Uh... Yeah, I'm I'm in Brooklyn, and I had noticed that this winter, um, like it's it's quieter because there's no air conditioners. That mm -hmm. like, you know, when you have so many apartment units that are close to each other and that are stacked on top of each other and everybody has a window unit it's not something that you necessarily maybe hear or notice but when it's gone um or when you you know when you're listening with the microphones it's like wow you know there's there's always a noise like you can't escape from it even if it doesn't kind of come to your mind and you know in the moment um but but yeah um in the, the the winter in these past few months, um, it's definitely quieter mm -hmm, here, mm -hmm. as quite quiet as it could be, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it's it's uh, it is something, and um, I just want to say um, uh, we've got uh, we've lost some people on with my mess up on the first first uh, stream there. We had about uh, almost ten people watching. Now we're down to six, so some some have found it again. But if they have any questions, please put them in the chat and, and uh, you know, direct them towards either Darren or, your, or to Joseph uh, in there. And we are going to Facebook this time, too. On the first round, we weren't uh, transmitting to Facebook. So anyway, so hopefully we'll, we can kind of salvage some of the, the footage from all this. Now, Joseph, I just want to say thanks. And, and, and I want to mention to anybody that's listening, if they're looking for any sort of products, 
in terms of uh, what you have on your site. And let me just bring your site up here. Uh, I want to just kind of show them um, in here. Uh, and you've got, uh, let's start with the microphones. And, and uh, you know, so you've got the microphones. And what I wanted to say is I ordered some things from you. And you went out far above what I would expect. You went over to B&H to pick up some stuff for me and put it in a package and send it off. I mean, if that's not service, I don't know what is. And I'm not getting paid for this, people. I'm not getting paid for it. Joseph went out to B&H to, to, and, and put some stuff in, and I just received everything today. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. That was uh, of course. very kind of you to do that. Now, can you talk about uh, your microphones here and, and kind of tell us what uh, what they are and how, how they can be used? Sure. Uh, so we have a range of mics. They're all very small microphones. Um, they use Primo capsules, which are kind of pretty well regarded and pretty widely used in the field recording community and, and also in sound design as well. Um, at the moment, we have four mics, one of them, and, and they're all sequentially numbered. It's a SO1, 2, 3, and 4. 1 and 2 were the first two mics. Um, one is kind of the ones that, that Frank and that you, Frank, and Darren both have, which is the SO1. Um, and the SO2 is a little bit different. It's more of a, a like a lavalier microphone. It's much smaller. Um, yeah, that's the SO1 that Darren yeah. has in, in this uh, camera. Um, and yeah, they're just, they're super sensitive. Uh, they pick up space and they pick up depth of space very well, um, especially when used in pairs. Mm -hmm. They capture details and nuances and i almost kind of think of them as like like if you get really close to a subject with them like they're almost kind of like a macro lens for a camera like you kind of really like hear things that you just i don't know are either too subtle to notice like without microphones um, just with your ear or they just kind of take on a significantly larger presence maybe than they otherwise would um would have or what would be perceived as so when i'm when i'm using the microphones i really like to use them also kind of that way as well so i guess um yeah so the first two mics are the so1 so2 uh we then released the so3 which is a cardioid microphone also with a capsule by primo and it has a similar kind of frequency response um to the SO1, like it's very flat and neutral. Um, but being cardioid, it does have, it brings in the kind of component of directionality, um, which is really nice. So if you have subjects that are on the side or rear facing to the mic, um, it, the microphone rejects those sounds. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so those are pretty interesting. Um, and, you know, they could also, when used in, in pairs, you have a wide array of stereo arrays that you could use, like an XY array, um, an ORTF array, um, uh, different, you know, like 90 degree, 120 degree mm -hmm. XY, and, and so on. So, so that was the next microphone we, we released. And then we released the SO4 after that, which is in the center of the screen now. Yeah. That one, um, it, it, it's actually the same capsule that's used in the SO2, but it's packaged and it's kind of presented in a similar way to that of the SO1 and the SO3 in that it has a detachable cable. Um, it's, it's a little bit larger in size than the SO2. It also, the SO1, SO4, and SO3 all kind of are designed to use the same family of accessories so like the bbg adapter mm -hmm. that we were talking about earlier um all three of those mics are compatible with it we have a few other accessories that we're going to be releasing soon that we're pretty excited about as well um of which it's compatible with as well and uh the so4 is an ultrasonic microphone so meaning that the, the frequency response extends quite a bit beyond 
20k, which is the the outer limits of human hearing, um, yeah. is 20k kilohertz, and the SO4 captures up to about 70 kilohertz. And some people might say, "Well, why do you need you know why do you need that additional range? You could only hear up to 100, or you could only hear up to 20k." Well, there's a lot of sounds that occur in the ultrasonic range. Uh, that we have no idea exists because, well, we can't hear them. And when you capture those sounds, um, and when you capture those sounds at you know higher bit rates, you can or sample rates rather, you can reduce the speed of them. And then when you reduce the speed, that brings those sounds into human hearing range. Yeah. So okay. a lot of people will record like machinic noises. Um, a lot of people will record like insects which are pretty interesting. Um, So there's a lot of uses for that. And uh, the the results are often pretty, pretty wild. Um, Like when you when you bring the ultrasonic sounds into into the human Mm -hmm. hearing. Yeah, because I do and I don't know if you guys do I I do sound effects, I record sound effects and and I I load them to my uh, stock uh, agencies, and um, along with my photos, but um, so you're saying that with that uh, higher frequencies, some of those sound effects would be better? Is that um, it, it, I, I wouldn't necessarily say better, but you might, depending on the source and what you are capturing, there might be some additional information that, that you just aren't hearing otherwise. Um, in the sound effect world where, you know, we are often like maybe creating an overly dramatic effect of something or we are you know increasing the intensity of something or we are layering several things um the microphones could be really useful like in in terms of like texture or adding texture to a sound yeah okay very interesting Mm -hmm. and and darren now um in terms of uh your equipment are you looking for anything new to add to your repertoire of audio recordings um, so while, while Joseph was talking, I just ordered the SO3s uh, from his website because uh, that uh, the, you know, what, what he was talking about, being able to use a directional you know, cardio, cardioid type microphone with an omnidirectional uh, and then using two channels for that really, uh, or actually be four channels, really opens up uh, you know, a broad spectrum and some really I just imagine being able to create a really atmospheric recording from that. Mm-hmm. So uh, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to receiving those, Joseph. Um, in terms of recorders, um, you know, I, I mentioned I had the Zoom H5, which I really don't use anymore. Uh, but I have a, a Zoom F6, uh, which is a, a 32-bit float recorder, uh, six channels. Um, I don't know if anybody yeah. is yeah. coming in here. but. Uh, uh, so this is uh, a wonderful recording device. Uh, the one I use most often, however, is the Zoom F3, uh, which well, is also 32-bit. That's the smaller the version, same... isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's tiny. It has the yeah. same preamps as the, the F6. Um, it's only two channels. However, I mean, it, it fits in the palm of my hand uh, with an external battery uh, pack attached to this. You could record for, you know, I recorded 39 hours of, this past summer up in the Upper Peninsula and uh, still had plenty of, of battery left. I actually ran nice. out of card space. I only wow. had a 128 gig card. And yeah. so, uh, but uh, yeah, the, the F3 is probably my, my favorite recorder to use right now. Hmm. Uh, at some point, uh, I, you know, I, I will look at other microphones. Uh, I guess my, my most high-end microphone and high-end is in quotes because it's really you know, what you want to get from it is the, uh, the Audio Technica BP4025, which is a, a, a stereo mic. And I, I use that a lot. However, you know, it's, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, the, the windscreen for that is, is much bigger. And uh, it's not as, as lightweight or as easy or portable as I, I would like it to be. If you bear with me, I can show you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is the the 4025 in in its full wind regalia here and i don't know if i can get this in here but so obviously this 
this isn't as small as you know what we just showed here with with Joseph's microphones. Yeah. Um, you know, I can I can literally put the F3, uh, two of the SO1s in my pocket and go record somewhere, and and not worry about your know, weight or or being uh, overly obtrusive or people wondering what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, if if there are people that notice me out in the middle of nowhere, uh, but you know, but the the the, the forty twenty five I think from Audio Technica is a great microphone, especially for the price. But uh, if anybody's just starting out, I would really look at anything using the EM two seventy twos, like uh, Joseph's SO ones. Uh, there's the Clippy mics you can get. Uh, that's another one. A uh, Loam uh, has some microphones that uh, use that EM two seventy two. Or you could also make your own microphones. Mm -hmm. uh, I did that with the EM two seventy two capsules, uh, trying to expand the capabilities of my H five. Uh, it's possible, but I would say for the price you're you know, for your time and the, the price of sourcing all the materials and then knowing how to solder, stuff like that, you know, go to a site like Joseph's and really uh, utilize his skills uh, and his ability to get product to you quickly. Uh, that's, uh, I, I think he, he probably has a better supply chain uh, agreement with, with companies. He's able to get those capsules much quicker than like you or I would be able to. Yeah, uh, because yeah. he probably you know he buys in bulk and uh, it is able uh, to uh, to get product where you know I had to wait I think six weeks to get my two seventy twos when I built my my first microphone. Mm -hmm. Well, then, then plus you know like I say getting getting it from uh, Joseph's site too, it's 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 custom it's custom made for you you know like I mean that's uh, and that's that's kind of a nice nice thing that you know like if you have a question um joseph's there to answer it you know and and mm -hmm. uh he's really good you know on that point so um it's just nice to have because some of these companies you deal with i mean you're just a number to them well with joseph we're we're faces you know <laughs> he know he knows us personally you know which is kind of a a cool thing to to have you know so but uh for, for me for me the, the the kind of custom aspect or the Somebody reaches out and says, you know, I have a specific need or I have a problem I'm trying to solve or I want to do this, but I want to do it in, you know, this particular way. Like whatever kind of scenario um, that is, you know, brought up or, or that people reach out about, um, that's one of the most rewarding and fulfilling aspects to all this for me is like, OK, let's solve this together. You know, let's let's figure it out and let's let's create something that really works for, um, you know, for the needs or for the for the use case that you have. Yeah, yeah. And there's there's that's something I'd, I'd like to, to try to push further um, moving forward and have been been fortunate that, you know, there have been several of those custom projects um, thus far. And there's so much there's so much fun. To yeah, work through. yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. I think it, and, and it's it's really appreciated too, you know. So mm -hmm. to, for the people, now um, I'm just gonna go back to Darren's uh, web page here again, and I wanted to talk about uh, this one here, uh, Darren. Now, what what that was that uh, big setup that you showed us. Now, how long were you out recording? Because you've got a lot of snow on this equipment here. Yeah, so that was uh, an overnight recording or a drop rig recording where um, I, I knew I wasn't likely to get sounds being in the area. Uh, uh, this area is, uh, there's a beaver dam right there. Uh, they typically come out at night to do their, you know, to do their thing. Uh, deer are in this area, foxes, things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But this was one I, I did a drop rig because I'd been out two nights before that uh, trying to record uh, Red Fox uh, that I, I had a 30 second recording a, a few weeks prior to that. And I kept going back to this area because I wanted to get them, uh, you know, in a, a more long form type recording. Uh, there were foxes that were yipping to each other as they were kind of circling me. Um, but I wasn't able to get that. And so I, I just placed the recorder out overnight. Uh, in as you can see in the the photo, it did snow, um, yeah. and what you're hearing is a, a deer snorting, a white-tailed deer. Uh, that was really oh, curious okay, about yeah. the microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I and, guess yeah, because they don't see these things out in in the wild. They they come across and they wonder what in the world is that, you know? So yeah, and uh, so I somebody made a comment on this video today, I believe, uh, that it it scared them uh, because mm -hmm. there was or actually on on the the long the long form uh, piece of this uh, that was about forty minutes in length uh, because you know you're just kind of hearing some wind some ambiance and then all of a sudden you hear this deer snort and it just really comes out of the speakers or the yeah, headphones yeah uh, what was especially cool about this site though is because it's right on otter creek and the creek at this point is about 300 feet across so it, it creates this echo and I, if you listen closely you can hear after that deer snorts it resonates across the stream and bounces back or the creek uh-huh and um and, and deer will do this when they're scared or they're trying to warn other deer of danger, but they'll also do it when they're curious. Um, and they, they, they don't have very good eyesight, so they will sometimes do that snort if they sense something is there and they want to draw it out into the open. Mm -hmm. Or in this case, this weird looking, you know, Contraption rolling thing here, yeah. Yeah, in the yeah. middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, you know, so the, the deer kept coming back to it, sniffing around it and actually bedded down there. So when I got there the next morning to pick up the, the, the recording gear, you could see where the deer had bedded down, mm. though. So uh, apparently, they became very comfortable with the microphone at some point. Yeah. Now, um, how, how did you uh, protect your equipment, your your recording? Did you put them in plastic bags or? or... Yeah. So um, the uh, if you look at the kind of the bottom where the the mic cable is coming down, there's a, a bag there. Uh, th that's that's a dry bag, mm -hmm. uh, so it, it it's essentially waterproof, and that's where I put the the, uh, the battery, the recorder in there, uh, and then it seals, kind of rolls up upon itself and, and seals. Uh, and then I do have what's called like a duck back for the, the, the microphone. Yeah. However, I didn't have it with me, but I have to say that uh, that wind fur held up. Uh, there, there was no water on the microphone and mm. no water on the, uh, the plastic housing underneath. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a cool, yeah. yeah, cool setup that you've got there. And I did look at this one here, these ice balls that are, are mm -hmm. uh, uh, forming here at, uh, in, in the lake. That's that's quite something, too. You know, yeah, there's, uh, there's yeah, you've never seen that. No, there's only a few places in the world where this happens. The Lake Michigan is one of them, certain parts of Lake Michigan. Um, and it, it, it happens infrequently. So it, it's, it's a fairly rare occurrence and you never really know when they're going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, this is late in the year for it to happen. It yeah. typically would happen in January or uh, early February. Yeah. Um, and, and mm -hmm. What happens is that's just the water, uh, you know, rounding those, those huge chunks of ice into these balls. And then they, they wash up on shore, which is really cool. Yeah. Now here's a, this this setup you were here. This is your tree hugger setup. I think you were yes. talking about mm -hmm. until you got. Boy, even here the these mics have got snow built up. So you you've left that out there overnight again. That's another overnight recording. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I said, these uh these EM two seventy twos the the SO one microphone. It's it's amazing, and you know that was out all night in the snow and zero issues. Hmm. You know, I, I, I don't know, you know if Joseph would recommend that kind of treatment to, to gear, but uh, you know, I really like to, to get to where the sounds are going to be. And if I have to leave a device for several hours, uh, you know, I want to be able to do that. And these mics have, have, have worked every single time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, I'm, Darren. Sorry, I'm curious, Darren, after you took the wind jammers off, were they like, were they wet? Were they damp? Was there little moisture, a lot of moisture? Uh, so there, there was a little moisture. However, it was just, mm -hmm. you know, almost condensation on the, the metal barrel. Mm. Um, and then listening to the recording, I mean, sometimes, you know, my, my 4025 will sometimes get staticky if it's really humid mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, but yeah, there was, there was no crackle or any sort of interference at all from being out in that weather. Awesome. Mm, mm, yeah, very cool. Yeah. And here you're coming back out of, uh, I guess this was, <coughs> excuse me, your overnight. Yeah, that was, I was picking up the, uh, the deer recording. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, very, very cool. You know, so it, uh, yeah, it's nice to have, 
uh, the equipment to go. Now I'm I'm heading off in April to to Maui, and and uh, I'm hoping to do uh, some recording over there. And and I've got those two SO uh, ones, and. Now, uh, there's a couple places that I'm going to go. It's probably one's going to be right on the ocean. And again, you know, just your guys' uh, setup. Should I have them side by side on that bar? Like you, you saw the right code bar I have. So I have, have them individually or or can they be crossed? Like, you know, you hear this X, Y uh, setup and, and or just having like six, six, seven inches apart. What, what do you suggest? Because I'm, one's going to be on the ocean, and another one I'm hoping to do some in the in the the, the forest area uh, to get some birds and that sort of stuff. So, sounds. For for the omnis for the so ones, I would recommend using a spaced a uh, spaced pair mm -hmm. array, opposed to an, an X Y or or a crossing. Yeah. The microphones um, tends to pick up a wider stereo stereo image and also a a, a deeper stereo and more realistic stereo image as well um i, I was in maui a year maybe two years ago and, and took the so ones there as well mm -hmm. and and there are there's a recording on the website i believe of the beach or one of the beaches um, of waves from the pacific ocean in maui mm -hmm. and at the time i made the mistake of of uh, having the microphones close to the to the sand um, so there's like very little distance from the ground. Um, it kind of muffled the sound a bit. It it helped perhaps with wind, um, but it, it muffled the sound. So if you're recording at the water, um, would definitely recommend also just elevating them. Okay. Uh, probably like you know shoulder height or or bet like between waist and shoulder height. Yeah, yeah, would, would, would yeah. be good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because it. Yeah, because I'm I'm looking to to get some sounds uh, from there, and and uh, um, also uh, the, where we're gonna stay. Um, like lots of birds come out cause on the golf course there, so lots of birds come out, and then there's also deer that uh, come up at nighttime. Come out now. I don't know if I'm gonna be lucky enough to maybe get them, because cause we've been out there a couple times in the evening. There's about 30 deer walking around and I guess they're snorting like what Darren's uh, deer was doing there be you know kind of so be kind of curious to see what what you, you can pick up in there you know so but uh, now have you guys uh, tried any of the microphones like like I was telling Darren I, I got the the Rollins you know with the the headset the, what they call the binaural 360s have you tried any of that uh, uh, equipment so I created a pseudo binaural uh, uh, stereo array microphone with the 272s. Uh, Jared Blake, I don't know if you're familiar with him from Acoustic no. Nature. Uh, he has plans of how to build that. Uh, so I, I did I build one using his plans. And it, it kind of mimics kind of the human head uh, in where your ears would be. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's as far as I, I've gone with it. I know there's a lot of other uh, field recordists that you, you know, that have the DPA at 10 something, you know, that, that fit in your ears as you walk. And yeah. those produce some really interesting uh, recordings. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's supposed to, you know, kind of mimic as what a human would naturally hear. Yeah. Um, yeah I, so I haven't done too much of it. Uh, I, I try to do, you know, if, if I'm using the stereo bar, I'll do kind of 110 degrees, like an ORTF type setup. Um, and then if I use my stereo mic, the 4025 from Audio Technica, I mean, that's, it's kind of a narrow space because, you know, both channels are, are kind of right next to each other, but it does kind of have that dynamic range uh, that I'm looking for in a stereo recording. Uh, so mm -hmm. th that's the extent of my experience. Yeah, yeah. Joseph, about, what about you? Have you? Uh, so I, a few years ago, purchased, I believe the brand was Hook. Hook Audio made made like a, a I don't know if they still make make them but there's like a kind of like a behind ear with like a cord that wraps around the behind behind it behind your head yeah and it, it was a Bluetooth mic and I don't know there's all like the software was kind of buggy and just I don't know like got in the way of of kind of really like okay let, let's listen to the recordings um, so I didn't really record much or 
or further use those. I ended up selling those. Mm-hmm. Um, however, there there is, there there were a few customers um, that have reached out with, you know, I want to make a binaural setup, and I, um, you know, I have the headphones that I have right now, the Sony. Um, 7506 I, I think that they are they're like a very like standard like studio mm-hmm. headphone. um and we designed these clips that that attach to the like the, the headband here and it it mounts the so1 on either side oh. and um yeah so they the those the two customers had had reached out regarding that and they produce some pretty interesting recordings um, from from the feedback that I received from them, and also what I experienced with the hook audio mics is that wind becomes like you need to protect the mics from wind. Yeah, and, yeah. And so that's that's always, I guess, the issue with that, um, especially if you are walking and you're mobile. Um, so you could, and Darren, as you mentioned earlier, like you could use the wind jammers. Or even double up the, the foam wood screens with the wind jammers, but if there is like anything above a, a, a moderate amount of wind, um, it could get noisy. Yeah. So this is this is the Roland um, mm-hmm. uh, that I that I just received and and did the recording on it, and they are amazing. So I mean, it does go in your ear, so you can hear what, but it is there's nothing here to put on the wind and I was trying today find some things to put on to uh, do a little bit of protection. I've, I've used a toque, I put a toque over it and, and utilized that and, and it did muffle it. But the problem with these particular ones is there's a lot of cabling noise too. So, yep. you know, you'll hear, especially like I'm, I, I had kind of a, a, a plastic, well, a vinyl jacket on I should probably had some sort of a woolen one it might have uh, stopped a little bit but these little things are just amazing I was and again as I mentioned when I played the the audio back from them I kind of look right because I thought there's somebody actually coming up beside me you know kind of startled me you know and uh, and and so they're that real you know when you hear these 360 recordings that uh they kind of take you back and and and, uh they do kind of catch you you know kind of off guard like wow you know Mm -hmm. but uh but the other thing you know like with with these um uh recordings and and uh equipment i'm i'm surprised like how small these things are getting like you know i always thought like bigger is always better well nowadays it's it's, you see microphones are getting just small 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 tiny little things and they're 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 having some great performance out of them, some great audio. I think also the the preamps are getting better too, mm-hmm. and the, the recorders are getting much better. And yeah. it, I I can't speak too much about recorders. Um, I don't know in like maybe twenty years ago or even ten years ago, but from what I've read and just kind of the research that I've personally done is that. Oftentimes, like the noise of the preamps, will prohibit you know the performance of the microphones. Oh, okay. Um, so like like with the with the zoom recorders, like especially the F three seems awesome, mm-hmm. and I have really have read very little, ne- if any, negative comments about it. Um, it sounds really good. The the sound devices recorders are also really, really 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 good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like to say. I mean, I've read some interesting information about that. Also, I mean, I have the the Tascam X8, and uh, my friend uh, Wayne, who's out in the watching all that, he gave me the H4N, uh, and that kind of started me on this journey of recording. And uh, uh, and they and they still they both of them record awesome sound. Um, to my ear and my my skills, I don't see any problems with them. I don't know. If, you know if they're bad or otherwise you know it just uh but they they seem to work work for me you know so yeah i I think as long as you realize the limitations of the the devices you're using uh, the the zoom h5 that i had you know does have a noisy preamps but you know that's when you're really cranking the gain and trying to extend the reach of your microphones but i also think that's why these 
Primo capsules became so popular, you know, before the 272, there was the 172 mm -hmm. because they, they do have low self noise. So you're, you're trying to mitigate the noise from the preamps by not having a noisy mic on top yeah. of those noisy preamps. Yeah. So that has helped. And then if you, and, and Joseph, you know, know more about this than me, but if you, you wire, if you use two two seventy twos in parallel, I think it lowers that noise floor even a, even more. And I think that was the idea behind Jared Blake's uh, design. So it used it used a, a total of four two seventy two capsules uh, that was supposed to bring the noise floor even lower. Um, and I don't know the 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 veracity of that claim, but uh, you know I followed his design and uh, I still had issues with the the preamps from the H five. So that's why I ended up yeah. getting the F six. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, like I say, I'm I'm not that tech savvy, you know. But uh, um, you know, I leave it uh, to you guys, the pros. You know, I just go out and record, and you know, it sounds good to me. It's that's it. You know, and and if I upload it to my the stock company, and they take it, then I guess it's good. <laughs> you know. So, uh, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I anyway, think at no. the end of the day, if you're if you're happy with what you're recording and you're happy yeah. with the sound, then it's a yeah. great recording. Yeah. That's yeah. All no. That I, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I agree. I mean, and, and I think I've I've been getting some uh, interesting uh, sounds. I, I went out for, uh, and and it's amazing like the how these things pick up sounds. Like I mean, I went for a little walk in the in the trails the other day, and and I can hear every footstep and crunching of the gravel below my feet and you know and and, and uh, yeah it's just and it's amazing the tiny little microphones you know and and they're they're quite a ways away from uh the the noise itself you know that it's picking up but uh yeah very cool now i'm gonna leave it here we've got we had about an hour with this it's been about an hour it's been it's been great talking to you guys and and uh I look forward to maybe doing another one down the road and, and uh, just uh, uh, chatting some more about uh, the equipment. And, and uh, Joseph, you know, all the best, uh, you know, with the company. Thanks for, again, everything that you've done and, and all. You've gone way above and beyond for uh, picking up stuff. And, and uh, uh, oops, I guess he disappeared. He's gone bye-bye already. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway... Um, Darren, same same thing to you. Thanks for all your help, you know, uh, with the information on all. Oh, absolutely! This I really stuff. enjoyed it. Yeah, you know, and and uh, look forward to to hearing more. And and uh, I'm going to start uh, putting some uh, sounds up also, um, and doing some uh, recording, video recordings, and and putting them up in the, uh, in there. So, um, and I'm gonna I'll have this up. Uh, once I kind of go through it, uh, and then maybe you can even put it on your site if you like and share it up there. Okay. And uh, but uh, yeah, it's too bad that uh, the first didn't go through. But oh no, he's Joseph's back here. So let me just uh, yep, there he is. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we lost. I think you. I, I lost you guys. Oh, uh, you pulled the plug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Said okay, I've had enough of these guys. I'm got I'm out of here. But uh, yeah. But uh, no, uh, like I say, we're looking forward to you know uh, chatting again and, and uh, seeing what you think you're you've got coming, Joseph. So uh, and uh, hopefully you know it uh, it's just it's just nice to chat and, and talk about sounds, you know. And, Absolutely. Uh, you know so, and I appreciate and thank you very much for coming on and, and uh, partaking in there. And, and like I say, it's too bad that the first part didn't go as planned, but. You know, you can plan all the stuff, but live, always something goes goes away. Sure. Know, so, it, so. It, it gives us an opportunity to do it again. Yeah, so that's right. We'll have to get together, you know, again in the near future, hopefully. Yeah, no, for yep. sure. Would love to. Yeah. Okay, guys, I appreciate your time and effort, and, and uh, we'll we'll talk soon. And, and uh, thanks, thanks again. And I'm going to uh, just got to click on my next say and say goodbye and thanks a lot. Cheers. All right. Thanks, Thank everybody. Take care.